The following portion of daytime is sponsored by Millennium Physician Group. Sleep apnea is a common disorder that we typically associate with loud snoring, but our next guest says it involves much more than that. So here to discuss the symptoms and treatment options is Dr. Nectarios Demetrio with Millennium Physician Group. Thank you for being with us again You're today, welcome. doctor. Thanks for having me. So I think, I mean, like I said, snoring, that's what we think of when we hear sleep apnea, but there's a difference in sleep apnea and what you say is obstructive sleep apnea. Tell me about that. For sure. So sleep apnea has two categories, central, and obstructive. Central sleep apnea is where there are faulty signals from the brain in regards to uh, respirations per se and, and as a result of that it creates an apneic event meaning that you, you're not getting enough oxygen. Whereas obstructive sleep apnea is more to do with the uh, physical uh, the physical distribution of the individual in the sense that if they're overweight uh, they've got a thick neck circumference etc and then as a result of that when they lie down where they're sleeping the muscles in the back of the throat um, are basically softened and they collapse sort of obstructing that airway when they're breathing hence you get that resonant noise of snoring etc okay so i'm sure there's a lot of husbands and wives that think they can diagnose this for their significant <laughs> other that's true but what is the way to actually go about getting a diagnosis is it something where people have to go to a sleep lab or see a specialist or? well you know first off to even know to be aware <clears throat> that there's a presence of sleep and apnea is really the question. A lot of the times we actually find out from the spouses where they hear their husband snoring or vice versa. So when that happens, one of the biggest warning signs is when the individual stops breathing in their sleep and they are waking up gasping for air. That's a big, big warning sign. As a result of that, go straight to your doctor to get evaluated and then he could either send you home with a, an actual portable sleep apnea device where you can actually have a sleep study at home or you could be referred to a sleep specialist, meaning a pulmonary doctor that specializes in sleep medicine, who will then basically get that set up for you as well. Then you go back and then you see them for the interpretation of the result. So once someone gets the result, they know what to do, what are the treatment options from there? Typically, um, CPAP, which is a machine that basically uh, gives positive airway pressure in the mouth to keep the airway open so they get oxygen while they're sleeping. But secondly, um, and actually probably even most importantly before CPAP, is losing weight. If you're really? overweight, try to lose Just the weight. Just weight loss, that, that alone? In some individuals. I mean, you obviously know if you see somebody walking down the road who's rather obese, you know that person needs to lose weight. If you have somebody who's slim, let's just say, but still has an obstructive sleep apnea, um, then you have to sort of look at why. So it's not going to be as straightforward a case. But in typical, in typical terms, the risk factor for sleep apnea is being overweight, thick neck circumference, etc. So if they are overweight, the first step would be to have them lose some weight. So some people may say, well, it's just snoring. I can get past that. It's not that crucial. But there are a lot of other health benefits that come with getting better sleep, right? Absolutely. So it's important to get this checked on. Sleep in itself is regenerative. That's basically where we recharge our batteries. So a good night's sleep means the next day you're ready to go. Obviously, sleep apnea causes a lack of oxygen to the brain and also to the heart and to get circulated to all your other areas of your body. As a result of that, it can over a period of time cause a lot of symptoms that the patient can exhibit, such as morning headaches, fatigue during the day, uh, just constant lethargy, not thinking clearly, inability to exercise, all those factors can start playing into it. All right, Dr. Nectaros Demetrio, that's all great advice. Don't just let that snoring go unanswered, right? That's right. That's our solution. Thank you so much. For more information on how to find a physician or schedule an appointment, you can visit millenniumphysician.com. Daytime will be right back. The preceding portion of Daytime was sponsored by Millennium Physician Group.